Who here had an imaginary friend when you were younger? If you did, well, that's creepy. But I can't blame you because it's a normal part of growing up. Hey everyone, welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10 and welcome to today's video. I'm your host Lindsay Ivan and today I'm bringing you the top 10 signs your child's imaginary friend is actually a ghost. Now, children have imaginary friends for many reasons. Their friends are often a manifestation of who they want to be. So if your child is more anxious, then they may have an imaginary friend that is brave and strong. Imaginary friends also help them explore their imagination and social skills. Although they should not cause parents concern, maybe make sure that your child is actually just creating this friend and not seeing a ghost. Now, if you're watching this video because you believe your child is in contact with a ghost, well, uh, best of luck to you. Hope you get it all figured out. Starting off this countdown, we have the use of morbid language. When kids are young, they're often oblivious to mortality. That's why it can be scary if all of a sudden your child starts to talk about death or murder. One little boy had an imaginary friend named Roger. One day he said that Roger shot and killed his entire family. Now how did a little 4 year old boy come up with that? Like it's so graphic. I Doubt he learned it from watching Paw Patrol. Another kid started talking about suicide and her imaginary friend hanging herself. Again, how does a young girl know about that? Those are some dark topics. The only explanation is that she is in contact with a ghost and it is telling her those things. At number 9 we have old imaginary friends. Now imaginary friends often are close to the children in age. If anything, maybe they're a couple years older. That's because kids often make their friend an extension of their personality. Now, what do you do if your child has an imaginary friend that is super old? Like imagine little Johnny having an imaginary best friend that's a 65 year old man. That's just creepy. If your child has an imaginary friend that's old, I would suggest looking into the history of your house. Chances are they are interacting with a ghost of someone who passed away in the house. And then I suggest moving out immediately. Unless it's a friendly ghost, then hey, maybe you got yourself a free babysitter. Coming in at number 8 we have the drawings of the friend. Now kids love to draw pictures and color. Most of the time it's just scribbles. In fact, I remember one time when I was a leader at a camp, a kid drew an image for me and I was like, oh thanks, it's a cute giraffe. Turns out it was a picture of me. <clears throat> Anyways, I would start to worry if your kid starts drawing weird images of their imaginary friend. This could be drawing their friend covered in blood and holding a weapon to drawing a girl with four arms and glowing eyes. Because those were both images that two kids have drawn, claiming that's what their imaginary friend looks like. Now, they could just be making these images up, or they truly could look that horrifying. Coming in at number 7 we have a change in your child's language. Now I'm not talking about your child all of a sudden being able to speak fluent Russian or French. That would be freaky but kind of cool. But no, I mean your child talking about stuff they couldn't possibly know. Now young children are often oblivious and some of the stuff they say can be outright hilarious. But be careful if your child starts talking about more mature subject matter. Well maybe they're the next child genius or maybe they're friends with a ghost. This one girl by the name of Madison had an imaginary friend named Kellum. Um, the name literally sounds like kill him, but uh, I guess the parents ignored that first warning sign. Now one day Madison was singing the song called On a Bicycle Built for Two. Now this song was released in 1963 but Maddie was born in 2004. No one had ever played this song for her. When her parents asked her where she learned it, she said that Kellum taught it to her. So yeah, Kellum was definitely a ghost. But imagine some kids born years from now, if a ghost taught them a song it would be like a Drake song or something. Moving on, at number 6 we have the attachment. Maybe you should be concerned if your child starts getting older and they refuse to say goodbye to their imaginary friend. This might be because the ghost is attached to your child and won't let them go. In fact, a family in Sydney, Australia had this happen to them. Now this family had two sons, Oliver and Max. Oliver was 10 and Max was 6. Both the boys would talk to an invisible girl named Clara. They would even want to set the table with a plate for Clara and wanted to buy her clothes. The parents thought that it was getting a little too weird and were going to put an end to their relationship. That's when she started causing trouble around the house. Objects would fall and break, they would hear noises, and they would get unexplained power outages. So Clara started lashing out when the parents tried to interfere with their relationship. I mean, I hope they got that situation solved. At this point, I think that a part of every parent's child starter pack should include sage and some holy water. Seriously. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the scary depiction. 
Usually imaginary friends are humans. I mean, you have some children that have like dragons as their imaginary friends, but that's not really scary at all. Now imagine asking your child what their imaginary friend looks like and they describe something horrifying. Because that has happened quite a few times to some parents. One parent said that his son described his imaginary friend as a creeper man with no face. So Slender Man was your son's friend. Another family said that their daughter's imaginary friend had glowing green eyes, a deep voice, and likes to wear a scary mask. It amazes me how children can see terrifying ghosts like those and they aren't afraid at all. Like, hello, you befriended a demon, how aren't you scared? At number four, we have physical harm. It's probably time to call a priest if your child's imaginary friend is physically hurting them. Ghosts can get really territorial, so if you try and stop a child from interacting with their imaginary friend, or if the child refuses to play with them, then they may lash out. This happened to a young girl who had an imaginary friend named Jenny. Now, the family had moved into a new house, and as soon as they did, their four-year-old daughter developed her imaginary friend. One night, she asked her mom if she could play in the basement with Jenny. Her mom said no, and the next morning, the little girl woke up with deep scratches on her legs and back. I'm just glad that the little girl didn't go into the basement. I think it could have ended much worse for her. Moving on to number three, we have the friend who died. Now, here's just a little tip. When you're thinking of moving into a new home, maybe do some research on the house itself and the area. Just make sure that no one passed away in the home or nothing bad happened in the area. I mean, you would think that that would be a given, but uh, so many people have moved into houses and only later found out why they were experiencing paranormal activity. So if your child is talking to an invisible person, maybe you should do some research and see if the name of the child's friend corresponds to someone that died in the area. If it's true, then maybe they're talking to the ghost of someone that passed away. That's what this next woman discovered. So her son had an imaginary friend who he claimed lived under their trailer. He would come out daily to visit her son. Turns out this little boy was murdered by his mother who eventually confessed. She said that she had buried him underneath the trailer. So yeah, her son was in contact with that little boy. Also, if a child straight up says that their imaginary friend is dead, then that's a dead giveaway that their friend is a ghost. I feel like some parents would be like, oh, my daughter's just quirky. Like, no, Karen, your daughter is seeing a ghost. At number two, we have the isolation. Now, if a child has an imaginary friend and they start to isolate themselves from others, I would start to worry. This could be that the ghost is trying to have the child all to themselves. The more isolated the child is, the more easily the ghost can influence them and take control control of them. Ghosts may want the child to cut their ties with their other close friends so that they are the only friend that they have. This is what happened to a boy named Andrew. Andrew had an imaginary friend named Scotty. One night, Andrew and his two friends had a sleepover. Scotty got angry and ended up taking control of Andrew. Andrew woke up in the middle of the night making high pitched noises and walked over to his friends. He then squeezed his friends arms tightly and said, Scotty wants you to leave. When Andrew snapped out of his trance, he had scratches up his arm. Oof, you wouldn't have to tell me twice. If Scotty wanted me to leave, I'd be out that door so fast. And in our number one spot, we have a change in the child's behavior. Now, imaginary friends are supposed to encourage healthy development. However, if their friend is not so imaginary, then they could influence your child into committing dark deeds. As a result, your kid's personality could take a complete turn. You may see the child become more closed off and quiet, saying that they are only allowed to say or do as their friend tells them. The child also may go from being all happy and loving to experiencing more dark and evil thoughts. Now, I believe that ghosts, especially evil ones, target children because they are easier to manipulate and control. A lot of kids have told their parents that if they don't do as they're told, then their friend would hurt them. So if you see your child walking around with like knives or other sharp objects, maybe watch out. Who knows what the imaginary friend told them what to do. In fact, one parent said that their daughter had an imaginary friend and was later caught discussing with her friend how to burn their house down. Another kid had an imaginary friend named the captain. The captain kept telling him that he needed to kill people. When he refused, the captain said he doesn't have a choice and that he will get used to killing after a while. Like, dang, he certainly isn't friends with Captain Crunch, that's for sure. Well, that's all I have for you for today. It is now time for our comment shout out. I'll be shouting out comments from my video top 10 scary Mickey Mouse depictions. Christopher Capers Jones commented, fun fact, this was uploaded on my birthday. Well, happy birthday, Chris. 
Hope you had a good one. Rio Rainbow commented, yes, queen, I'm early enough, you may see this. You're correct, I see you commenting. Hey, hey, how are you doing? I forgot my name commented, the scariest thing about Mickey Mouse is his ticket prices. First off, hope you remember your name. And secondly, I agree, it's so pricey, but I love Disney World, I wanna go back sometime. And that's all the comments I have for you for today. If you want to be featured in my next comment shout out, then comment something down below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you.